Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. Thank you for coming to our third annual community symposium here at Stanford University. And it's wonderful to see everybody who's here and on live stream, and we have Facebook Live from all over the world. Uh, you're going to hear from a really esteemed panel of, sci of, of scientists speaking today on the current knowledge on the molecular basis of MECFS, and we're just thrilled. We are a very proud sponsor of all of these events and everything that we do because we want to bring scientists and clinicians together to really share openly, share results, and collaborate and work together to really fast pass this and find results. So we're really thrilled. We had three phenomenal days of, of science meetings and uh, we have a lot of progress there. There is hope, there is progress, there really is hope, uh, hope and you'll hear a lot about it today. So uh, I'd like to begin by thanking our symposium sponsors. We have Dr. Deborah Rose and ProHealth and the American Contract Bridge League. So we could, certainly couldn't have the symposium without them, and we really appreciate, we really appreciate their support. So thank you, thank you very much. Please join me in thanking them. We also want to thank very much our donors, our patient partners, our scientists and clinicians for inspiring us and making research possible. Please join me in thanking everybody. And I want to thank our hardworking OMF team and our ambassadors. Uh, many are here today. Many are watching from all over the world. We, they are helping us with awareness. They're helping us with everything that we're doing at Open Medicine Foundation. And I'd like everybody to thank them as well. Thank you. So who is Open Medicine Foundation? What do we do? We started this in 2012. And why? Because as you know, MECFS is still misunderstood underfunded and under-researched. And over 20 million people are suffering all over the world, if not many, many more. So what are we? We're the largest nonprofit organization funding MECFS research. We have a remarkable scientific advisory board. We bring thought leaders together. We engage the patient community in what we're doing. We have an outreach to over 100 different countries. This disease is everywhere. We translate it in 15 different languages and we've raised over $19.5 million since 2012 to keep all of this moving forward. So how are we going to continue our mission? I mean, we have a really strong mission. We have a responsibility to the patients to help find answers. So we have a goal for the coming year. We want to raise $20 million in 2020 in honor of the 20 million people who are suffering worldwide. We want to raise awareness. We want, to, we want to excel and drive open collaborative research, and we need to educate doctors so that patients can see doctors and be treated for the symptoms that they have. So who are we? We are people with chronic illness. We are parents and families. We are caregivers. We are scientists and clinicians, and we're all working together for a cure. This is our scientific advisory board, and many, have, many are here today, and many have joined us the last three days in our science meetings. And we'd like to uh, announce uh, the addition, I'm, a pr I'm, I'm proud to announce the addition of, of our new member of our scientific advisory board, Dr. Olay Moreau, who's here from the University of Montreal, Canada. So please join me. So Open Medicine Foundation is, is currently funding three collaborative research centers. We have this uh, under Dr. Ron Davis. Uh, Dr. Uh, Ron Davis is the director of our scientific advisory board, and our scientific advisory board is over all of the research that we're doing and leading our research. We have uh, our, our collaborative research center here at Stanford under the direction of Dr. Ron Davis and at the Stanford Genome Technology Center. We have under Dr. Ron Tompkins and Dr. Wen Zhang Zhao uh, at Mass General Hospital and Harvard-affiliated hospitals, and Dr. Jonas Berquist at Uppsala University in Sweden. Uh, this is the picture that we took a couple days ago with our group uh, at our science meetings this week. And this is a picture of the Harvard group that we had. We had a meeting in June. I also have the pleasure today of, of formally introducing OMF Canada. So we just uh, got tax exemption status for Canada. 
uh, so that we can start uh, raising additional research money and, and uh, uh, doing fundraising efforts in Canada. There's over 500,000 people that are affected in, in Canada alone. So we're really thrilled. Anybody who uh, is from Canada and, and uh, would like to go on our new website, which is open, which is omfcanada.org. And lastly, we have, we have this announcement. Uh, this is the, from the US MECFS Clinical Coalition. It's a coalition of a group of US clinical disease experts who have collectively spent hours, uh, hundreds of years treating many thousands of MECFS patients. They've created a handout on the basics of the diagnosis and management of MECFS. This handout is available online at, on our website and at other organization website. And we also put the link at the bottom of this slide if you just want to go and print it out. This is a wonderful tool to be able for patients to be, bring to their doctors in their local area to introduce them to ME if they know nothing about it, and for other doctors to learn more about it. So uh, until we find a cure, this is a really great tool to bring to doctors to educate them more. Leading research, delivering hope. We won't stop until we find answers. Thank you very much. I'd now like to introduce Dr. Chris Armstrong. Chris is well known for, his, for over 10 years of research on the role of energy metabolism in MECFS. And as our OMF science liaison, Chris is communicating science to the community while continuing his research into MECFS. Please join me. All right, thank you very much, Linda, for that great introduction. And as you can probably tell from my accent, I'm from Australia. And this is a picture of the Great Barrier Reef. Um, as you can see right now, it's not looking so great. Uh, this is a picture kind of demonstrates to me or, or what it felt like for me when I started in this career 10 years ago as a researcher. Um, I was just like one of these little fish floating around this uh, research environment at, that seemed barely alive at the time. I think it's important to recognise that a research field, just like a coral reef, takes a long time to grow. Um, that's because the nutrients that a coral reef requires to grow and proliferate is actually produced by a full coral reef, which is much like a research field in, in the terms that the way you need to fund research is based on the nutrition that are produced or the, the funding that's produced from a fully functioning research field. So how do you overcome that boundary? Well, this is something that Australian marine biologists have been thinking about for quite a while. Um, but luckily, something fantastic has just happened. So just off the coast of Tonga, which is just near Fiji, a large uh, pumice raft has actually elevated and is floating as a rock formation at the top of the ocean. It's going to take several months to find its way to the Great Barrier Reef. And as it travels across that period of time, it's going to be providing, or it's going to have, be collecting nutrients, and it's going to be collecting coral, and it's going to be collecting other sea life and taking it to the Great Barrier Reef to essentially rapidly grow, uh, regrow the reef itself. That's how the scientists predict it. And I find this analogy quite similar to when Ron Davis came to the MECFS field itself. Um, he himself had been growing through a research field throughout his entire life, uh, growing his experience, his expertise, but importantly also growing his connections and his, re and his network throughout all of research. And he's coming to the MECFS field to essentially give off uh, that type of network and that type of resources to uh, the MECFS field, which was just fantastic. And so right now, the marine biologists in Australia are thinking about how they can support or help support this boon um, that's coming towards them to help proliferate the reef. And this is kind of how Open Medicine Foundation uh, see themselves in trying to support the research field and the growth from it, um, from this experience. So I thought I would just show like a little video of this pumice raft that's at the top. It's pretty incredible. A boat's just riding right through the middle of it. And if you uh, look careful enough, you might be able to see uh, Ron Davis just out there. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> As you can tell, uh, I'm not uh, in charge of the video editing at OMF, thankfully. <laughs> but I think it's important to recognise just how important these collaborative research centres are. 
So this type of event that's occurring doesn't happen that often and you have to take the advantages that you get. Um, having someone like Ron Davis come to the field, it's important to have the finances uh, and the money required to fund the research to maximise that potential. And so in doing that, Open Medicine Foundation raised funds for the Collaborative Research Centre at Stanford University under the direction of Dr Ronald Davis, um, but has also now subsequently raised funds to initiate a collaborative research centres at Harvard and Uppsala. At Harvard under the direction of Dr Ronald Tompkins and Wenzong Zhao, and at Uppsala University under the direction of Dr Jonas Berquist. And so the important part about this isn't just about the high quality research that they're bringing, but it's also the stability, the, the grounded yeah. structure. For a coral reef to grow, it needs to attach to a rock because it needs something that's going to be there for a long period of time and sustain it. And that's kind of how we see the collaborative research centres. This is not just about the, the fantastic research that's happening at these fields. It's about what they can do in terms of the longevity to build the research field itself. And so Open Medicine Foundation right now are actively trying to fundraise uh, so that they can continue to support the research in these areas and grow them uh, into the oncoming future so that we can have a full and, and luscious and beautiful uh, research field in the field of MECFS just like this. Uh, thank you very much. And so now I'm going to introduce someone who uh, reminds me that I guess a mother's love uh, is reflected best in the strength of her children. Janet Defoe, thank you. <laughs>